but it does much more than Lightroom. It's much more convincing as photographic grain. So quite recently, I saw a movie, The Unsolved Murder of Beverly Lynn Smith. It's an Amazon movie. The murder takes place in the 1970s. The movie captures events that took place very recently. It's a fascinating movie, well worth watching. They're trying in the movie to get these documentary interviews that they do and to match them with footage from the 1970s. It's a difficult trick. They try their best. There is footage from the 1970s, video from the 1970s, the interviews with real characters right now in the 2020s. And, and, and there's also reenactments where they try to reenact events that might have taken place in the 1970s. And they use all sorts of tricks to try to combine all this different footage to make it look uh, all similar. Now, the reenactments use things like grain, they add film grain, they add uh, all sorts of visual effects. It doesn't quite work. <laughs> it doesn't quite do the job. But overall, one of the things I like is that I think they filmed the, the, the interviews, the recent interviews with actual film, not with digital capture. So there is some success. What we want to do in this video is not to take a look at uh, film emulation in video. We want to take a look at it actually in stills. And what we'll find is that there are some very interesting plugins that we can use to try to do film emulation inside of Lightroom and Photoshop. Now, just to repeat, that movie is fantastic. If you get a chance to watch it, definitely do. I'm inside of Lightroom. This is a photograph. It's not very noisy, but if you're gonna use a, a plugin like the one I'm gonna be uh, recommending, what, one of the things you might want to do is to remove noise. So I'm just gonna very quickly demonstrate that. Um, we go to the detail section inside of Lightroom, noise, reduce the luminance noise. And you can see that some of that texture that we can see there uh, around here in the light parts, some of that texture just disappears. We can bring back some of that texture using the detail slider. So if you wanted to add film grain, you probably want to remove some of the digital uh, noise inside of the, the image. And you want to do that if you want to sharpen as well, because the digital noise doesn't always look good when you sharpen. Now film grain is different and the plugin we're going to be using will add film grain and it's very convincing. We're also going to be taking a look at inside of Photoshop at other features that you have inside of this plugin, Dehancer. It has other features that allow you to emulate film using uh, not just raw files, but also with photographs that you've taken maybe uh, as JPEGs. So what I'm going to do here, we've we don't need to do much noise reduction in this image because it's actually ISO 100. But if you had ISO, say 16, uh, if you had, uh, let's say 3200 ISO, some of the dig digital noise can get really, really irksome. It doesn't look good. With film noise, with analog noise, it's designed to look good. It's designed to have a nice aesthetic. So you probably, if it was a nasty situation with the ISO, you probably want to reduce some of the noise and then we go into the plugin. Right click, edit, and we're going to choose Dehancer. Now they not only do photographic film emulation, they also do video and some of their plugins uh, cover software like Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve. Uh, we're going to edit with the Lightroom adjustments and hopefully everything goes well. Here we are, that didn't take too long. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that we've got, the image looks different. That's the immediate thing. I'm going to bring back a tab that normally appears on the left there. And this is the area where we have the film profiles. You can upload these from the website, from the Dehancer website. And there are tons of different uh, profiles. So this one here is a, is a fascinating color one. This is the Fuji uh, Fujichrome. Uh, CDU uh, cross. 
you've got color negative motion picture positive color positive black and white let's go to the black and white ones and this is where the film grain can get really interesting now there are two pillars to the plugin you've got the film profiles and you've also got these adjustments which include film grain i'm going to choose the one down here and what you see is that the contrast changes it looks different this is the uh, Roly, one of the Roly uh, ortho 25 and that guy gives this high contrast this is going to look nice uh, with this particular image we're going to go to the film grain we're going to work with the film grain for this image we'll look at the other stuff in the other uh, inside of photoshop we'll go ahead and turn on the film grain you might not be seeing very much or you may be seeing quite a lot but you should be seeing particularly in the bright areas a little bit of grain uh, i'm going to increase the amount we'll increase the size and look we can go one to one and you can see the grain a lot better and what i like about this is just how realistic it is we can actually work around with some of the uh settings here and we've got resolution if you want a lower resolution film grain the kind of thing that you get in intense film grain um in the special effects inside of lightroom there's a there's a grain function you can get it to look a little bit like uh that inside of this plugin but it does much more than lightroom it's much more convincing as photographic grain and we'll go ahead and take a look at something really interesting here you've got not just amount and resolution you've got shadows so we can increase the film grain in the shadows we can maybe reduce it a bit in the midtones take it down in the highlights and then it really does end up looking very realistic when you do it this way maybe pull back the size a little bit and if you just take a look at this it's a very realistic rendition of what a black and white photograph might actually look like. Very grainy one. Let's increase the size a bit. Now there's an option for, for color, noise. Obviously with this black and white, it doesn't quite do anything. We can see the before and after. It's a complete transformation of the image from a real, well, modern, digital capture to something that I think looks probably the most realistic grain film grain that are, or uh, camera film grain that I've ever seen. Now once you're done you can go ahead and hit OK and it takes us back into Lightroom. There we are and it exports as a as a TIFF file. Now the next thing I want to do is to take a look at this plugin inside of Photoshop and one of the things I like about the plugin is that I've been using it for a couple of weeks now and it doesn't crash Photoshop. It does not crash Lightroom. This is a problem that sometimes is fatal to plugins. Let's go to the Dehancer plugin inside of Photoshop. Um, now this I think does work also as a smart object if you try to, uh, if you want to edit that way. We're going to keep it simple. This is a photograph from Adobe stock. So we're just looking at a typical JPEG image. And what we'll do with this one is take a look at some of the film profiles. Now there are lots of these. You can actually go into settings and download uh, new ones if you haven't, um, if you haven't got them installed on your system. And uh, you can choose which graphics card you're going to use to accelerate. You can turn off the fast preview. I've got fast preview turned on. Uh, turned off so it will give a higher quality image uh, and uh, if, you, if your system is a bit slow you might want to play around with some of these settings uh, high resolution we might not want all of that now with this one you can see the effect that we have in terms of the film grain we're going to look at the color uh, negative and here we've got some familiar names some names have not come across Astrum color negative, Cine still. This one is amazing. You can see what it's doing with the contrast and the color. 
we've got some Fuji film here. And if you've used these films before, you might have an idea of what to expect. Let me go ahead and choose color positive. And we'll go ahead and choose Fujifilm Velvia 50. That one is really nice. And we can do a preview. And maybe not quite as important with this image, we can do a one-to-one -one, uh, preview as well. You can use the mouse to zoom in, zoom out. You can scroll in, scroll out. Now there's an option for push and pull. So you can adjust that for each of the different uh, profiles. And you can also create your own presets. Now let's take a look at some of the presets and this will show you some of the features uh, over here as well, because I've been playing around with the presets to create my own presets. And I've been using this for interesting little projects like working on thumbnails, giving the thumbnails a bit of a different appearance. So you can see you can go hard. I'm going to see one of the very hardest. This one I went really hard. Uh, and it, w when you create a preset, we come here, we add the preset, give it a name. And it captures the preset with a copy of the photograph that you were using when you created it. That's a nice touch. Now, this is a very nice plugin, but a couple of points I want to make which are in the negative area. It works with sRGB. And obviously that's going to be a bit of a limitation for some of you guys who have wide gamut color monitors. And it also, one thing I found, particularly when I was making more subtle edits, um, I, I found the, the absence of a sort of a color picker, uh, a numerical uh, color display. That was something which I found limiting because I just, sometimes I just wanted to know what the more desaturated colors were actually uh, what the numerical values were for the for the more desaturated colors. But as you can see, it's very fast, very responsive. And if you've got very powerful hardware, it will actually utilize that. So let's take a look at some of the changes that I've made here with the tints, uh, with the uh, settings over on the right. So we've got the source, which can allow us to change the color temperature, just like in Lightroom. And just like in Lightroom, the sliders move a little bit too fast for, for my liking. They go from zero to 60 very quickly. So fine adjustment is something which is a bit difficult to do sometimes. Um, we've got uh, the expand option, which allows us to work with the black point and the white point. That can really, really change dramatically the, the contrast. Uh, we've got some print emulations going on here uh, and these can dramatically change how the image looks. Just as when you change how, you know, the paper that you use, it does change the, uh, the appearance of your project. And we can play around with the color density. And certainly when we've got some of these lighter colors, the, the adjustments in color can be very subtle sometimes as well. You can go very hard as I've done, or you can go a lot more subtle. Uh, we've got the color head feature, which allows us to do very similar to the color balance inside of Photoshop. Let's undo that. And we've got the film grain. And again, with the film grain, you can go very, very subtle. You can take the amount down so that it's extremely subtle and it looks just like uh, ordinary film grain. Uh, maybe increase the size a little bit. Uh, I like to have the shadows fairly low. That's not the default. And we can see now the color noise. If you look down here, we've got no color, color noise and, and then boom, we've got a ton of color noise. So you can see the effect that this has on the photograph. It's pretty realistic and it reminds me to some extent of the kind of when I was talking about that film, I think they captured the movie using film. And you can sometimes just see this tiny little grain, uh, even with the with the very high resolution movies that we have now. Uh, I really like this. I think this is really cool inside of the inside of this plugin. Halation is about adding little bits and pieces of it's difficult to explain. <laughs> you have to play around with it. Um, it allows you to add 
a certain amount of distortion that you would find maybe with a film, um, with a film print. Um, it's, it's one of those things that you want to, to actually get your hands on and, and experiment with, but it can be a very interesting uh, effect. Bloom, let's turn that off. You can see what that's doing. It's adding that sort of glow to, to everything. That's a really nice uh, feature. It's very complicated. Uh, in terms of what it allows you to do. There's quite a lot of help on the website if you want to get to know a bit more about this. Now, once you've got the changes here, if you want to, you can go ahead and still work with the profiles. So I'm going to just save this as a preset and we'll call this demo. And when we've got the changes over here, we can still go ahead and play around with some of the profiles. So we can go and say, okay, let's see how this particular look works with a different film. Maybe not so much that one. Let's try this one. So you can see, you can save the settings on this side uh, with the, and, and try them with the, with the different color. Uh, profiles. Um, now, that's more or less it for how it works. There's a couple of things I want to point out here. Uh, this button here, when you press OK, it will save whatever you've had uh, inside of the image. So whatever colors you had, whatever settings you had, it will save them and it will allow you to restore the last settings. This is a lifesaver. If you forget to make a preset, it allows you just to remember uh, exactly what you put in last time. Uh, we've got the reset and the undo, another lifesaver, but basically very easy to use. It's a very pleasant plugin to use. It's very enjoyable. One limitation is that it has got just a two week trial period. So if you want to test it out, I'll have a link in the description. You probably want to test it when you have a couple of weeks, maybe a bit of slack and you want to get your hands on this and try out, try out the, the different features. I really like it. Obviously, you have to, before making an edit, you have to duplicate your layer if you want to keep the original. Um, but yeah, that's basically how it works. It's a lot of fun to use. I gotta say that. Um, the price, a couple hundred dollars uh, at the moment, that's not gonna be within everyone's reach. So I think it's gonna be for those people who have a fairly large budget for, for plugins. But if you do like this, I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. Guys, that's going to be it for this video. Hope you found some of that useful and I will see you guys in the next video.